Hi everybody, I'm here today with Grandmaster Sahaj Grover, uh, who is um, having a good day. He's just defeated Ronak Sadhwani uh, with the black pieces. Hi Sahaj, how was your game? Uh, it was a, it was, I would say it was not such a great game uh, because I think I, uh, he played the scotch, which was which was a bit strange because I, I don't think he plays that that often. I, he's more of an Italian or, or a Spanish player. But um, yeah, after scotch, I was a bit thrown off, and he went into this um, sideline with knight b3, which I haven't analyzed in a very long time. And um, after ten moves or so, I think there was a, an hour difference between the two of us because he was completely in prep, and I, yeah, it was really not a it was really not looking good for me. But uh, I, I remembered analyzing one of the positions with this with this d5 d4 idea, and I, I think I I misremembered, or maybe it's a different position. But um, at the time, I was thinking that this is probably the right move to play. But uh, yeah, judging by how the position was after h4, um, knight h5, and g4, I I really really didn't like that so much, especially after f takes g4, knight f6, and when I played knight g4, I mean, I feel like he sh should have just defended the bishop or, um, um, yeah, with bishop g1 or something, but I think he just made a blunder and he just played bishop b2 and after knight takes f2, that the uh, bishop b3, bishop b4 idea, I think he just completely missed that and I got I, I, I got a bit lucky there. But uh, all in all, I mean, I'm happy that I won the game, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't a great game, I would say. Uh, as soon as he made the blunder, did you catch it? Like, did you immediately know that this is not working for him? So, I I thought after Bishop E2 for quite some time, I think 10-15 minutes or so, because it just, something didn't feel right in that position, because the dark bishop is something you shouldn't give um, in in that position. I, I don't know, it, 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 it was a feeling, uh, because I felt that without the dark bishop, White doesn't have that much attack. So I was looking at only knight f2 the whole time, but afterwards, I, I don't know. I didn't see bishop takes b3 instantly. It took me a while. Um, but I was looking at some other variations after knight f2, queen f2. But I, I, I yeah. After maybe about 10 minutes or so, I, I, I thought, wait a minute. I can just go bishop d4, and there is no mate on g7 anymore. And um, yeah, I mean, I, so I didn't. I felt something was wrong with bishop b2, but I couldn't understand what was the reason. Until a few moves more were played on the board. No, 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 no. I saw it um, after maybe 10, 15 minutes that, okay, this is a blunder. But initially, when when he played bishop b2, I was I was very confused. Uh, mm. Because it just didn't feel right, but I couldn't figure out why. Why? Yeah. And then you calculated and you got the other Yeah, I, I, then I understood that uh, he's he's losing a piece, I think, almost by force. I, I, I haven't checked the game yet, so I'm not sure. But I, I think he was losing a piece by force, no, no matter what he does. Okay. But before that, I think he should have, like Bishop G1 or something was, I think, I'm in, I'm in deep trouble there. And once uh, the blunder was made, then was it smooth sailing for you to finish off the game? Or were yeah. there any positions where you had to really be accurate? I don't think so. I think there were, there were different continuations that I could play. I think, uh, you know, after giving up the Bishop, the, the, just, the position just completely opened up for me. And I just had so many nice moves. Uh, I don't think I needed to be accurate. Um, but of course, you have to be yeah, to an extent. Of <laughs> yeah, but, but it wasn't double-edged in any way. It was pretty clear. I, I didn't feel like that. I think that's why I'm saying that. I, I think I got very lucky there because it didn't feel double-edged to me afterwards. Um, but yeah, um, I think I think he should have just played Bishop G1, and I think the position is really really bad for me. That's not double edged either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. So this is one of those games where you know you're looking at the engine and it says yeah plus two and one bad move and it's like minus two and you know that's when we say chess is brutal, right? Because <laughs> you it really is. Every move has to be perfect. It really is. I mean, in the last. Um, Five games that I've played, here, the bar has been dancing, you know, in, in each and every one of the games. I mean, especially my la yesterday's game was also like, it was a complete nightmare. I mean, one at one moment I'm winning, the next moment I'm losing, and it was just back and forth the whole time. And, and what happened finally? Um, I think my opponent made one more blunder than I did. So, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So tell me, does this uh, experience of playing on the chessboard translate to uh, the person you are in life? Like, are you able to handle these ups and downs in your personal life 
or in your professional life as well as you handle them on the chessboard um no i think on the chessboard i'm a little better <laughs> because i have more experience but not in life i would say but uh, on the board like of course i have uh, bad moments especially in abu dhabi i was um i think after the first six rounds or something i made four draws in a row and i think in each of those games i was completely winning and it was very difficult to ex- sort of accept that mm. um and then i pl- and then i made the mistake of playing the blitz where i lost about 100 points or so oh. so it it was a it was a really bad time um i think those two days um but i just i was very close to actually withdrawing from the event but i decided not to because i'm here to play and you know why not and i'm very glad that i didn't yeah because you finished up pretty well i think right yeah the last three rounds were went went really well for me after that i think you know i i haven't played chess in uh, at least otb chess proper otb chess in a very long time so i think it took me a while to sort of get back into action yeah so why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, that you uh, told me that you are this is your third otb tournament after uh, at least after a gap of 3 years so that's like very few tournaments so what have you been up to since you became a gm um well i've uh, i've been, i'm living in south africa now uh, i was initially studying there and then i was working there now i'm working as a coach i am also writing um courses uh, for chessable i have a new one coming up now uh with the with shrinath actually and uh, it's on the it's it's on the london system so i'm very so, uh, so i'm very excited about that So I mean these days I'm coaching and then I'm writing some courses and then I'm you know when I get time I I try to play. Wow and how do you uh, how are you able to kind of switch roles like this because you know playing chess requires a 100% of your time and energy and attention so how do you kind of switch from being a coach to being an author to being a chess player? Um I haven't really had to do that this year until this tournament. Um I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh it's 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 quite difficult trying to get back on the board because there's so many things that you know that are different at least you know in the last 5 years many things have changed um about chess and um I'm just trying to just go with the flow and just not just just not think about um you know just just not think about the change. I I basically came here to sort of play um I haven't played chess in such a long time and uh, you know as a player you know I'm always a player first and at least I tried to be and uh, yeah I just tried to play as many as many tournaments as I could and this is the, this is the one I could find I was I was in Chennai as the captain of the South African team and then at, at that tournament I decided okay there's these two tournaments are happening they're so close to me and maybe, maybe I should just play and I just did fantastic how was your experience being the captain of the south african team for the olympiad oh it was very nice um we had uh, we finished quite decently i think uh, we had some ups and downs in the in the in the tournament um but i think the team did really well um uh, our I, i think everyone performed really really well um we had i think one of the highest like standings in a very long time I, i i don't know the exact number but like but yeah i think every, everyone was happy they were each playing i think better than their strengths so uh, not not better than their strengths but it's just more so like they were playing better than expected no not i did expect them to play better but like i think they were they were just in form in that tournament and yeah. uh, that's 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 what's most important i know and form is such an important thing in chess i mean we realize that uh we go to tournament to tournament we observe players and you know sometimes the, the same superstar player is not up to the mark and you know you wonder what happened but i guess there's a real thing called chess form right yeah yeah i mean i uh, it's very difficult to come back to form um i i still don't know if i'm in form yet because um as i said you know the 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 results and the games are just two very different things i don't think my game was good today i just i just think it was i got lucky um, but hey but luck is a very important factor in chess also so i mean you know take it when you get it oh i mean i mean <laughs> of course i'm taking the win but uh, i'm i'm not i'm not particularly happy about my game either i, I think i spending like I, i spent nearly an hour in the first like 12 moves or something and that is that is just not okay yeah i know and that's that actually feels horrible when you're playing the game it feels like 
you know you're being grilled and you know now you have to come out and play the end game and the middle game accurately with very little time on the clock so so i know ronak is a is one of the strongest players in blitz uh, at least <laughs> yeah, yes. I, i mean i see him on leeches and just sort combo yeah, all the yeah, time and he's uh, fantastic and, and you know i had at one point i didn't realize it but i had 37 minutes left on my clock and he had an hour and 32 minutes oh. and i was just thinking to myself this is this is really not looking good for me <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah so yeah. that that was just not okay on my on my part yep hmm. yep well good outcome we wish you all the very best for the rest of the tournaments ahead thank you very much thanks